So there's absolutely nothing going on with my Cattleya lobata cerula and that is why I let the reservoir dry out completely before addressing any other steps. Welcome back everybody. And what have I spread on the table today? Well, first of all, it is time to start adding some silicon into my orchids. They are all in active growth. So I usually start as of May through to September, depending what the orchid is doing, to soak my orchids in with a silicon solution before flushing them out and putting the reservoir back with its 300 ppm fertilizer. I appreciate it that you're here, especially that I am on the west side of the house, which is extremely noisy because it goes right by a road. I tried to time this to match with a lunch hour, and it should be lunch hour, but clearly you can still hear a lot of background noise of the Spanish life going by. So I'm going to just uh, fill all my mask of the orchids that I've selected here with this silicon solution, which includes 100 parts per million of Epsom salts and another 100 parts per million of silicon. So for me, right at the beginning of the season, I go all guns out, all guns blazing with the silicon because of the active growth. We only have six months to get this substance into the orchids in order to enhance their growth potential. If you have strong leaves and a firm cuticle on the outside, it is more difficult for pests, etc. to get into the orchid and munch on the leaves. We don't only do that with the calcium, Lots of calcium will do it, but silicon as well. So that's the recommended dose, depending on, because I consider my growing method a hydroponic method, is 32 to 64 parts per million of silicon in pure water. And this is RO water, which came out at six parts per million. Why am I going at 100? Because they haven't had any for well, since September 19. So I'm going full on, all in. And the water is at a 6.1 something pH. Meanwhile, I'll just keep filling things up and we'll have a look at them while they're soaking. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all of them now filled up. I'm just topping up all the little pots that whoop, had a bubbling, you know, the air bubbles coming up and everything. So I'm just topping them up as the air bubbles disperse. But I think they're all pretty much topped up. Let's have a look. So I just thought I'm going to show you, this is the product I'm currently using, Growth Technology liquid silicon and in here you can see it has a silicate of potassium at 6%. Now you can also get products at up to 11-12%. Um, then I would suggest that you look at the instructions on the label and what it is that you need to be dosing at if you choose to try this. I mean it can't hurt. Um, I'm ha I have not had any real problems with pests in the two years that I've had this collection. You have seen some scale on, on this tetratonia here. And that is because this one never had silicon as well. I've never put silicon on because of the, how the small little growths come from the bottom and I was kind of wary of it. Well, now it's going to get a dosing as well and see if we can't protect the cell structure a little bit for the coming season. There's another product. Oh, by the way, yeah, this product and all silicons that I 
except for one, which I'll show you, they raise the pH tremendously. So you've got to make sure you to, that you pH down, okay? But I bought this one because it was a bit cheaper than this one here, which is Rhino Skin, which I absolutely love. Um, but I was using it quite a lot in my first two years because this collection is new and I didn't know it and I wanted to get it up to speed. So this, was, this one's quite expensive. However, this will not raise your pH. So basically, you can take the cheaper version and say, oh, okay, this one I need pH down, which you're also either paying for or you're using citric acid, which I'm doing now, thanks to Praben. Um, or you use this one, pay a little bit more, and you don't have to pH down. Let's see, this brand is Advanced Nutrients. There you go. But I used this for two years, which was really, really good. I enjoyed it. So my horror was a bit out there when I saw how high the other, this brand from Growth Technology, how high it raises the pH. But never mind, we can take it down. I'm gonna take you off the tripod and, and while they're soaking, let's have a look. So the Lobata Ceruleum, it's not doing anything and I'm still gonna soak it because this was a winter growth and it never had any silicon. So it's gonna get some through the root system. Tetratonia here is doing much better. I have not seen any scale since my last Bits and Bob video where we discovered some more. So that's fine, I'm happy about that. Here's the Neostylus blue that we took apart and put in its pot and um, it's doing well. So straight away, we're gonna give it some silicon. All my Vandas, everything that's growing in baskets that doesn't get a soak like this can, uh, because of a mask, they get it uh, through the foliar feed basically the same week because I have so many orchids the same week as um, as these guys. So tomorrow or Friday I'm going to do another load because I need a lot of RO water for this process here. But all my Vandacious orchids get it via a foliar feed. And then here is the little Basavola tubercolata, still in bloom loving it it's growing some new roots perfect time before it starts its new growth to get some silicon in there and here i have cattleya intermedia variety aquini doing really well this is its new growth of this year it has never bloomed for me but um, there's another new growth coming in through the middle so it's doing the same thing as last year two new growths Per year. Now we'll see when it blooms. Where are you? On the growth hunt. It's there, I promise. Hello. There you are. There you are. Hiding. So, Intermedia. And here is my Hinsing Cordata, Brasabola Cordata Hinsing. From Schwerter, we need to get that up to speed. I had a bloom this year, but only for picture purposes. Other than that, it's not doing that well. Cattleya of H, I think you've already seen, is right here. Both grows have now matured. No blooms. Here's my amethyst, Brasovola amethyst. I don't know if I've ever shown you this. Doing really well. I don't have any blooms yet. Never bloomed for me, but it is a stonking plant. Has some beautiful new growth. This was last year, coming up with its next one for this year, doing really well. I love this one, I look forward to its blooms. And here's Holdenii, the one that we have the cut from. And this is the back part or the front part that I potted up and you can see I'm losing some leaves. But here we are, great root growth, good timing. And then you know, you know Moscom, let me show you right here before we go anywhere. Here is Nani Puakea, Dogashima. Never bloomed for me, but it's growing really well. Got one, two, three, four new growths. Maybe another one back here. At least four new growths, which is awesome. Looking forward to some blooms there. Roy Tokonaga is growing new growth, so good time to get some, pump some, silicon in there here it comes 
I have these now so orientated in such a way that the growth some will actually come in line with the pot. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, how this one's coming out through the middle. That's great. Here are my two Francis Fox, one which bloomed, one which hasn't. And this one must have been knocked over by my resident gecko because it's super loose in the pot. I'm going to address that tomorrow. This one's growing roots, great timing. Then here I have my Yokosuka story. And that's why I put some magnesium into this soap because I don't like the look of these leaves. This is sunburn, but these guys I'm not too happy about. Okay, they're the older bulbs, but you know, let's give it a go. Let's see if it can recover. And then I have my Maxima in the back here. It has a sheath in a sheath. I'm expecting blooms in September, October, but it's also growing a new growth down here, which yes, is very close to the water level, but that's okay. It's a breezy warm day and they can stay out here once the sun goes down. I'm stood under our sun umbrella, so that's why there's shade at the moment, but uh, they will be in the shade for the rest of the day. Once the sun goes down, they can enjoy the temperature and the evening out here to dry out. And then this is my Dendrobium burana twist, a very sad little plant, not doing much. It grew this one last year, but no signs of anything else going on. Very wobbly in the pot, two pieces. So, they, oh, hello. I take it back. There's a new growth coming on the smallest, saddest piece. Alrighty. It'll be tiny, it won't do much, but it's a sign. My pastoral innocence doing really well, hasn't bloomed for me yet, but it's a beautiful plant. Absolutely enjoy growing this one, blooms or not, because it brings out stonking growths like this, which are absolutely amazing, as thick as a finger. And down here I have another one, which is also going to be opening. This was last year's growth. So we'll see, maybe this one, maybe this one this year. It looks big enough. Area Hyacinthoides, doing well, starting on its next growth production. Little one down here, little one in the middle there. And then we have my Epicatlea crosses here, currently in bloom. And they're starting to push out new growths as well. Soon they will be much more visible but the, all the nodes on the bottom here are swelling so this is the time silicon time here's my Lelio Cattleya Denard Blue Heaven hasn't bloomed for me yet I love the roots though we can keep those going as best as we can but this new growth man it looks so promising doesn't it look at where that bulb is going to be this year it's sticky with happy sap as well so Maybe some blooms from Dinard Blue Heaven this year. And then we have our little Dendrobium Jarek Horn over here. I showed you that early, early days. It's still doing nothing, but that doesn't matter. Here I have Lancifolium. I think this one's gonna bloom in about two months. This sheath is dried up, but it's chubby inside. But it's already starting on two new growths. So that's excellent. Very happy to see that. This sheath here is also quite chubby inside, so maybe in two months we'll have some blooms from Lancifolium. Here I have my Luminosa. She is newcomer from, uh, I would say newcomer, yeah, from February of this year. Very nicely rooting in. I can tug her and I'm, she's not coming out. She had barely any roots. So that's why you don't see the water level to the top because I don't want to disturb that new growth right there. Even though she's going to be outside, there is a calculation here because of how low I have her in the pot. She's a climber. So I lower her in the pot in the back, leave the leka away from the base down there, create like a little canyon, and then she can establish herself in the pot until she one day climbs out of it. We'll get to that problem when the time comes. Meanwhile, she's got plenty of room. And here's my Iricolor. My goodness, what a slow grower, but uh, doing quite well. Clearly a seedling, we've got a ways to go yet, but I got her with these two big growths. This was last year's growth, and it continued growing throughout the winter. 
and now we're having this summer growth coming here doing really well my hibiki coming up whoop that was a fast movement I'm sorry so here's hibiki I have five four growths one two three four four new growths on this one being a bit lazy mr. hibiki you're being lazy but meanwhile I have buds coming which is awesome I have two keikis so we're still going along those lines we've got more production going on here but here I have some buds there's a cluster there's a cluster and there's another two clusters on this old cane over here so we're looking forward to those blooms they'll be around for at least six months <laughs> this is a machine I love it okay so that will be the little overview while they soak. Everybody's doing okay, and I'm getting bitten in the back, and I'll come back when we start emptying out the pots and filling up with fertilizer. All right, I had to shift a few things over across the table. We almost had a major disaster because the sun umbrella fell over from a gust of wind, which it shouldn't be doing because it's supposed to be weighed down enough. But nope. So that was a close call. All I'm doing now is just flushing through the pot. I will do that with all of them, not on camera of course. That would be too tedious to watch, but just wanted to touch on the fact that why the silicon, I don't think I completed a few thought processes. Here I have my fertilized water. Basically the silicon can come and be absorbed naturally by when in organic media. I don't have that for them. Very small amounts. I mean, we're not talking huge amounts, but we are talking enough that it is important for their protection and their cell structure something that is also important with regards to calcium but this gives them the boost that they have that I'm not providing for them by growing in inorganic media so I wasn't sure if I had touched on all of that and also regarding the pH and everything if you have any questions at all you know that you can always ask me so what I'm doing now is just flushing through all of them, putting in the fertilized water and back to their shelf they go. We'll just do one more. And I have about another 80 to go. Part two of the series will be the summer blooming fowls. We can have a look at those because I do them as well. Clearly because of my RO water having to be produced for this process, it takes me a couple of days. But uh, when I pull out the summer bloomers for their stint, I will do a part two. Okay, thank you everybody very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, all right, I heard you, okay? I know, oh, stop, I'm doing it. Okay, hi everybody. I am so sorry, but Cousin It here kept staring at me while I was putting my other orchids back and he is absolutely right. He said I didn't sign off properly and he's right. While I was trying to finish the clip, I kept looking at the umbrella and I was really scared that it would actually teeter over again. And I got away with it once. No orchids were hurt in the process. And suddenly I got nervous. So I didn't sign off properly. It might have sounded a bit detached. And I'm really sorry, but once the adrenaline kicked in, I was like, oh my goodness, because the implications would have been horrendous. But everything's fine. So thank you very much. If you have any questions at all with regards to the silicon and why I use it, 
please let me know in the comments below and I'm actually thinking that I'll wait for the second part in case there are any questions and then I can address them while I will put the silicon into the second batch of my orchids. So I hope that all makes sense. Cousin It was talking reasonable and made a lot of sense so I humored him and added this clip on at the end to say thank you very very much and I'm very sorry if the previous sign off was a little bit detached. I suddenly got scared. <laughs> I had too many orchids risking on the table there. Thank you everybody for watching. Take care. Bye.